around the world. People are traveling to meet their friends, their families, and business colleagues. But what these hundreds of people don't think about when they step into a plane is the amount of unsustainable jet fuel that plane is using to power itself. Jet fuel is like any other fuel. It's not very good for the environment. Hello, my name is Sanjana Rao, and in this speech, I will be talking to you about the problems unsustainable aviation causes and how there are no limits in ways to make it sustainable. The points I will be covering in my speech are the problems unsustainable aviation causes and why those problems are bad, ways to make aviation sustainable, what are SAFs, and finally, where will we be in the future if we make aviation sustainable? Before I get started, for those of you who just don't know, aviation is the operation, manufacture, development, and design of an aircraft. So now that we know what aviation is, let's take off for the greener and find out ways to make it more sustainable. The problems unsustainable aviation causes and why those problems are bad. Humans have to start reducing their carbon footprint. We can do this by starting in aviation, but first, we need to address the problem. According to OurWorldAndData.org, global aviation, passenger and freight, domestic and international, accounts for 1.9% of all global greenhouse gas emissions, which includes all greenhouse gases, not just carbon dioxide, 2.5% of its CO2 emissions, and 3.5% of its effective radiative forcing, a closer measure of its impact on warming, global warming, that is, Okay, so I can definitely tell that you're thinking, why do we need to focus on that itty bitty sliver of the pie? That itty bitty 3.5%. Does this girl even know what she's talking about? She could have talked about car pollution, truck pollution, any sort of pollution, but she chooses to talk about pollution that comes from planes. So why does that 3.5% matter? Because this section of pollution is particularly hard to decarbonize. I mean, if we get the hardest bit out of the way, shouldn't it be easier to take care of the rest? I mean, come on guys, really. And that rest of that 96.5%, I mean, it doesn't really come from all just one source, other. No, it comes from <laughs> multiple sources, some of which are even smaller than that aviation percentage. And if it did come from one source, wouldn't we have solved that problem a really long time ago? My point exactly. See, but we need to know what causes these pollution. And it's jet fuel. Jet fuel is a colorless, kerosene refined type of fuel. It's also petroleum based. See, jet fuel carries many chemicals that are especially dangerous to our health, such as carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitric oxide, formaldehyde, and many more. You might be like, okay, those are like four chemicals. Why should I care? Well, you should, because guess what? Those are the same chemicals that can be found in a vape. A vape. And you don't wanna be breathing in fuel that pollutes our air with air that comes from a vape. It's just like you're vaping without a vape. That's the last thing we need on our minds right now. We have the COVID, we have so many things. We do not need to be worrying about what we breathe in every single second of our lives. No, no we do not. So, I mean, come on. This air pollution, it can harm us so much worse than what we're, we were originally thinking. I mean, take it from BBC. BBC's David Shookman states that you can't actually see some of the most damaging pollution. It's called PM2.5 and involves particles that are microscopically small. They are less than 2.5 microns across, meaning you can fit 400 in a single millimeter. Okay, let's listen to the BBC guy because he probably knows what he's talking about. Yeah, a bunch of itty bitty little itty bitty particles in a single millimeter. Imagine how much they're being a foot. Ew. Blech. No, I definitely don't want to be breathing that in because these particles, the largest ones, get stuck in your nose and they get into your lungs and into your bloodstream. You're carrying around all these vape particles in your body. That's the last thing we need. Like, come on. Literally, the last thing we need. 
But wait, there's even more worse stuff. Shock, shocker. Yeah, these smaller particles, th yeah, the tiniest ones can pass through nerves, get into your brain. Oh no. Yeah, and while it's not proven, this can lead to dementia. Replay that last bit in your head. Dementia, just by breathing in particles of jet fuel. But what if I told you that what would happen if none of this was there? Oh my gosh, wouldn't everything be so much better? Yeah, no. Yeah, no, it wouldn't. Because if you add expenses, a whole new problem piles up. Jet fuel is incredibly expensive. See, I'm a kid. What do I know about pl uh, paying plane tickets? Actually, I don't know anything, but my parents do. Your parents probably do. Everybody knows that money is valuable and we need, we need to conserve it and we need to do stuff that's good with it. We can't be spending it on a whole bunch of not really good stuff. <laughs> yeah, so if, it's, if jet fuel is causing to be this much more expensive than what we wanna pay, I mean, who really wants that? Nobody wants to pay an extra amount for something they don't want to be breathing in. Do you? No, you do not. Do you? No, you do not. Nobody does. Trust me and nobody ever will. Because people like their money, you know? They like it. So, all in all, these are the problems that unsustainable aviation causes and why those problems are bad. Ways to make aviation sustainable. Luckily, for every problem, there is a solution. My aunt, who works in the aviation industry, recently visited me over a break and told me about some ways that companies are coming up with to solve the problem of unsustainable aviation. So, now you're probably going to be wondering, uh, how am I supposed to make aviation sustainable? Can I just replace what that plane's running on? Yeah, you could. I mean, it's a good idea. but. It's not really as straightforward as that. For example, Minute Earth's video, Is There a Better Way to Power Airplanes? states that most alternatives to jet fuel just aren't energetic enough. Okay, so that's one of the problems. It's not energetic. So let's take a pretty energetic source, a battery, right? You use batteries in your phone, you use batteries in your toys, maybe like that little racer car thing you have, you put batteries in it and it makes the car go, right? So, yeah, that's the solution. So what happens if you have a plane, you put a battery in it, right? You could possibly get it off the ground, but what happens when you add 500 people, the crew, the cargo, <laughs> all impatiently waiting to get to Boston or something? The plane cannot take off with all this weight because it'll need more batteries, just weighing it down more. I mean, you cannot have a plane with like 17,000 gajillion batteries and all the added weight. There is no way you can get to San Diego from Boston without crashing somewhere, right? Maybe you'll land in Nebraska, I don't know. Yeah, so the problem is we can't use batteries, we can't use this, we can't use that, because they're not energetic, they're not lightweight, and a lot of them aren't even environmentally friendly. And isn't that the problem we're just trying to solve? I mean, come on. Who wants to replace an equally bleh solution with another stinky solution? Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. But what if I told you that there's something called a synthetic fuel? That's a good thing, right? It's still the amount of lightweight and energetic as normal jet fuel. And whoop whoop, bonus, it's environmentally friendly. See, everybody wants that one, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. But the big question is, how do we create that synthetic fuel? And this question brings me to my next point. What are SAFs? So I hope you're thinking, Sanjana, oh, this fancy, crazy expensive synthetic fuel, does it have a name? How do you create it? And yeah, asking you shall receive. An alternative to jet fuel 
is known as SAF. What does SAF stand for? SAF stands for Sustainable Aviation Fuel. But, I mean, SAF, could, it's sustainable, but how do you make it sustainable? Well, you're not using petroleum, you're not using this, you're not using all those black vape chemicals. No, actually, you're using crude oil, wood, trash, corn, and even algae. Yeah, the little plant that grows in the ocean. Yeah, you're using all of that to fuel a plane. Why didn't we think of this before? We're using our natural resources to help us make our Earth way more sustainable. Yeah, for example, a company called AirBP is using cooking oil and animal waste fat as their materials for their sap. Think about it. That oil you use to fry your little apple fritters or something, you're cooking that oil, that goes into a plane. And we're really helping it, our planet become more sustainable if we just take what we don't want, what we don't use, and put it into our plane and just make a whole lot of life better, right? Yes, it would be very, very good. Because in an article by IATA.org, this states that SAF can be created from a variety of materials. It's, you're using multiple different sources, so you're reducing that volatility that comes with having just one single energy source. And since fuel is the single largest operating cost in the airline industry, you're really reducing that cost because you're taking away all the chance and the risk that comes with having a single source of energy. You hear that? A single. You're taking multiple sources. Like I said, trash, your local garbage can, the corn that grows somewhere in the Midwest, algae that forms here in the ponds, and oil. Oil, guys, come on, cooking oil. These solutions are so simple, so simple and so sustainable. And who wants to hear a bonus? I know you parents do. This new fuel is less expensive. Woo! Yeah, I know you like it. I know you like it. Because, I mean, who wants to pay less? I want to pay less. The better thing is simple and sustainable. That's my motto. Simple and sustainable. Say it with me, guys. Simple, simple and sustainable. sustainable. Exactly. That's what we need to help our planet recover. Recover from all the things that we have done to hurt it. We need to fix it, guys. It's our mother, but we're its mother too. Because, I mean, what will happen in the future if we make aviation sustainable? Because did you know that in March of 2021, Airlines of America announced that its members were committing to net zero carbon emissions by the year 2050. That's only like uh, some years away. And in December of 2020, United Airlines made a similar pledge. See, people are taking responsibility. They know this has to be done. You know this needs to be done because we need to help our planet recover from all this modern industrialization waste, all the pollution, all the landfill sites. No, because can you imagine a world with sustainable aviation? People can breathe in air without having to be like, <laughs> no. People can, landfills just won't pile up and you won't be smelling that stinky thing from like 17 miles away. No. Oh, because in the words of my dear friend, Reagan Pulowski, fellow speaker, we only get one Earth and one chance. Thank you.